we know that there are multiple types of domains that exist within the proteins. So in this module, I'm going to show you how to organize different proteins with these different domains into a specific scheme. That scheme is called the cat classification. So you know already, as I just mentioned, that the domains can be classified into classes and that the classes can actually be organized further into architectures and then to topologies and then homology. So this is how the organization looks like in CAT and we will see in detail how it looks in forms of the proteins. So CAT is essentially an acronym built from class, architecture and topology and of course there is H that is for homology. So if you want to classify the proteins based on their class, then you can look at the domains that exist within that protein. So as you know, there can be alpha domains, there can be beta domains, and there can be alpha and beta, alpha plus beta, alpha over beta, so on and so forth. So in this example, I'm going to give you how alpha and beta can be classified into an architecture. So here, alpha and beta would mean that you have alpha helices and beta sheets that are mixed together and then you can organize them into various different combinations. The first one is the Tim barrel. So you have the alpha helices surrounding the architecture and then you have the beta sheets right there in the middle. Similarly, for a sandwich, you have the beta sheets in the middle and you have the alpha helices surrounding them like that. And for a roll, you have the alpha helix like that and you have the beta sheets that are rolling over this alpha helix. So these different types of combinations can be created by the alpha helices and beta sheets in alpha and beta architecture. Moreover, let's consider the example of the sandwich. So there can be multiple topologies for each sandwich. For instance, here you have the beta sheets and the alpha helices are at the outskirts of the domain. Here in the second example, the alpha helices are in a different conformation while the beta sheets are here like that. So this is how the topology can be different even though the architecture is the same, which in this case was the sandwich architecture. So from this figure, it is obvious that the highest level of organization is the topology, followed by an architecture, and below that is the class or the domain. So the different structural classes are shown here for your example. So here you have the alpha helix horseshoe. So this is constituting of alpha helices only and the shape is like a horseshoe and therefore it is called as the horseshoe. Then you have the alpha solenoid where you have lots of alpha helices and they are organized like a solenoid or like a spring. And then you have the alpha alpha barrel wherein the entire thing is organized by alpha helices in the form of a barrel. And here is an interesting example. So this is a beta propeller and the shape of the protein is actually like a propeller. So this is how the beta sheets are organized in this. And next is the sandwich. So in this class, lots of beta sheets, they come together and they overlaid with each other and they form a sandwich. Next is the alpha over beta super roll. So you have the alpha helices here, followed by alpha helices here, followed by the beta sheets separately. And next is the beta alpha beta sandwich, where you can see the beta sheets on both sides and alpha helices in the middle. And lastly, you have the alpha over beta prism, where the entire thing is organized like a prism and the alpha helices are going down and are linked by the beta sheets here. 
So these are the various structural classes that exist and that the class is similar in its secondary structural content and that all alpha, all beta or A over beta or alpha plus beta or alpha and beta are classes. The architectures are also called folds which are very important if you're looking at the protein structures and if you want to study their evolution. And also, you have the topology, which talks about the superfamily. And most probably, if two proteins, they share the topology, then they have the same origin. And lastly, homology, which essentially means that they are absolutely similar in certain function, at least. And for that, you need to have sequence alignment over 30%. So in conclusion, CAT or class, architecture, topology, and homology classifies proteins by their structural similarity and that it considers the internal organization of secondary structures within the protein. And you can essentially have databases of protein structures based on such a classification.